all that glitters is not gold. Now for those of you with the attention span of a gnat who are going to click off this video in about 30 seconds, I'm going to do you a favour and say in the intro, do not buy this gun. If you want to stay with me and find out why, then stay tuned. If not, see you later. Hello there folks, my name's Ben and this is a Shots Fired Airsoft video and today, well we aren't really doing a review of the Galaxy Gas Blowback because there's not really much to review because it doesn't really work and I have a sneaking suspicion that it isn't just my one. Uh, there are two kind of major issues with it that make it a no-buy um, at the moment and to be honest, probably a no-buy at all because if you want something like this, go and buy an AEP-01 and spend another 70 quid on it and it will be a million times better than this thing ever will be. Uh, okay, so obviously normally in my reviews you'll see uh, sort of two-stage shooting footage, you'll see chronographs. Um, I do have chronographs for you here, um, but they do sort of highlight only really the issue with this gun. It's not going to help you decide whether you want this gun or not. Well, I mean, it might actually just make you decide you don't want it. Um, I had issues from the start with this. I mentioned in the unboxing uh, that I had concerns over the nozzle spring about the return uh, strength of it. Apparently WE know that there's an issue with the nozzle spring, so why release them like this? But it isn't just the nozzle spring. Behold, we have a mag with some rounds in it. We have a nearly brand new Galaxy gas blowback. We put it in and we uh, rack it and as you can see the nozzle even though there's a little metal hook piece that's supposed to pull the nozzle back doesn't pull this nozzle back enough to actually load a bb as you can see in there um, and then you go to load it back in and the gun will stick that is a standard glock thing I must admit the hammers on them are not fantastic however this has now not loaded a bb let's pull it back hard oh that will get it back and then actually the nozzle will jam up on the gas router and so we still haven't loaded the BB but still that's okay um, it's only 140 quid um, why would you expect it to do any of these things now this is actually a problem a, a clearance issue with the nozzle on the magazine um, this gun has been lubed uh, because it didn't work at all out of the box. I managed to get a few shots out of it. And just before we start jamming this full of um, BBs, I will push that up, drop the mag out. Uh, but I'll actually show you a bit of the uh, footage uh, from when I was shooting it, where I had to actually put a, um, uh, a little, uh, sorry, a, a cleaning pick that I use mechanics into the gun to actually pull the um, nozzle back. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. Um, as you'll see from the, the actual target shooting footage, um, I would get about, and the chronograph footage I'll show, um, I could only get about 250 FPS out of the gun. I would say it's something to do with this. Um, I'm not convinced that adding a stronger nozzle spring would actually fix this. I, I think there's a, a major design flaw in this gun. Um, and I'm kind of struggling to see how this went through WE's quality checking process and actually made it onto the market. Uh, why they've done this, I don't know. Even if it is just the nozzle spring, why would you release it with a nozzle spring that actually is so bad that it makes the gun not function at all? I don't understand it. I'm not the only person with this issue. Um, I deliberately didn't watch videos of this gun because I wanted it to be sort of a genuine surprise. Um, I wanted a true and accurate reaction to this. And unfortunately, um, I, I definitely got that. But of course, now I go and look, everyone is having problems with these. 
I don't think there's a single person that I've watched on YouTube, apart from WE's official video, which of course it works immaculately in, because it would do. Um, I haven't seen a single <laughs> video where one of these actually worked properly. So, based on that, I'm going to get to the second issue now, and there'll be a bit more firing footage up, and you'll see precisely why I don't think it's even worth trying to fix these things. Okay, here we go. We've got the slide off. I'm going to pop some firing footage on the screen for you right now. Just look at the accuracy we're getting out of this weapon. So when it does fire, um, it will fire like the first four or five shots of a magazine when the when the gas is fresh in the mag. Because that's when there's enough savagery to pull the um, nozzle back so hard that it kind of like momentum jerks it back. And then it will cycle properly. Uh, as soon as the sort of gas pressure drops in the mag at all, you lose that ability. So we are getting like, you know, five or six shots. After then, you're kind of racking it by hand if you want anything to happen. Um, even then, it's difficult to actually get it to take a BB. Uh, and then when you do get it to fire, this is how it fires. The hop up in this is absolute trash. Uh, this should be more accurate. Than a standard Glock, it should be more accurate than any other weapon because it has a fixed barrel, nothing's moving. It pushes the BB in there and everything is set. It should fire pretty much the same every time. Incidentally, an AAP01 is pretty good in this regard. Uh, this is not a sort of Glock style hop up. This is kind of, I think it's, a, I'm not overly familiar, I will admit, with. Um, hop-ups in WE weapons. I know the high cappers. Um, I did have a Glock. Obviously, they've got a dial underneath. I don't know what uh, this is, but this is your hop-up adjuster. And the way it works is you screw it in and it pushes this plate up, which undoes the hop or uh, decreases the hop. And then as you unwind it, It brings that plate down and increases the hop because it push, it brings the plate down on top of the rubber. So if I just bring that out. Now there is so little feedback on this screw that I don't know what it's doing. Uh, it appears to have about two turns of adjustment before it just unscrews. So like, look at that, look how loose that is. That's like, what? Yeah, two turns from there now my gun's probably broken I, I don't really I don't really know because there is no way that this hop up could be in a hundred and forty hundred and fifty quid gun it is rubbish it is the single worst thing I've ever come across in terms of a hop up for a weapon like this it's just absolute tat uh, <laughs> I'm really quite angry that it's in this in this weapon um, yeah, uh, stunned and amazed. It's inconsistent, difficult to adjust. Um, I, you know, I spent two hours trying to get this thing to fire properly, and it would either ditch it straight into the deck. I'd turn it out half a turn, um, then it, the hop up would start working, but it, it would split it to the left, right, up, down. There was no consistency to it. It was firing like an absolute bag of shit. So, not very impressed with that. Um, it's a bit of a paperweight, this thing, and I'm rather upset about it, so uh, hey-ho, that's life. Um, I'd like to ask you guys a question as to what you would like me to do with this. Now, obviously, I'm 140-ish quid in the hole with this thing, which is about $180 for those of you in the States, if anyone's watching from the States, because uh, that's how expensive they are over here. I was just wondering if it was worth trying to fix, keep it in the box, wait for parts to come out, and then see if we can do something about it. Because the other thing is, is that this thing, there are no parts available for it at the moment. A lot of it, like I say, like the hop up and all that is proprietary to this weapon. Which isn't a bad thing, don't get me wrong. As long as it works out the box. If it doesn't work out the box, everyone's fucked. Part of my French. So precisely what we do with this, I just have no idea. It's, it doesn't work well enough at the moment. Other than, you know, 
a stronger nozzle spring in there may fix a few issues but I'm still pretty convinced that it just doesn't like cycling with the magnet um, because there's too much pressure on the nozzle which is a design flaw this rubbing on the top of the mag stops it from cycling obviously these have to have interaction because they are I mean you can see I've, I've had it looped <laughs> these uh, these have to touch the gas router because that's how they work you know there's a gas seal there but this appears to be too too good and it's not allowing the gun to cycle and I don't really know what to do about that at the moment I really don't so yeah um, this gun they do not buy do not purchase don't touch with a 10 foot barge pole if you want something like this go and buy an AAP01 like I said, for the price of this gun, you can go and buy an AAP-01 and dump 70 quid into it, and it will be a billion times better than this gun. For the price that I paid for this, I could have gone and bought a Tokyo Miro Glock G18. And been well happy. You know, it could have gone in my carbine kit and all that. Instead, I've wasted 140 quid on some WE trash that doesn't work at all. And I'm not entirely sure how to fix it. Normally, I'm, I'm you know, I can have a bash at fixing things. But this thing, I don't know. So that's it for now. Uh, sorry, it's probably not the video you guys were expecting. Uh, but hopefully it will save you a lot of money. So, uh, I've been Ben. And it's been a Shots Fired Airsoft video. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you soon. I do have a video of a very nice uh, sign my weapon coming up. Nice tactical AK. So stay tuned for that. That will be next up on the channel. Okay, folks. Thanks, boy.